Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Colts Coffee and Conversation. My name is Carl. And I'm Holly. I'd like, welcome to a Warner Flicks celebration of Colts Coffee and Conversation. How are you, Holly? I'm doing well, and you? I'm doing well as well. We want to say, first of all, thank you for your five stars. Thank you for your reviews. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your warm regards. Thank you for your rude remarks. We do appreciate them all. We love you. We love you. We love you. Keep pushing the five stars on that thing so we can rise up the chart of... The algorithms. The algorithms, yes. I can't explain them. I'm not going to even try. But it helps us out to move us up to arts and leisure or whatever. What is it again? Society and culture. (laughs) Society and culture. I don't know why I always get that wrong, but arts and leisure sounds nice too. Anyway, so regarding leaving us feedback, we have a few things we want to remind everyone, all our cultonites out there. We have our Facebook fan page at Colts Coffee Conversation. We have our Twitter at Colts Coffee Con 1. That is Colts Coffee Con and the number 1. And, of course, we do have our email address at Colts Coffee Convo at gmail.com. And we have Colts Coffee and Conversation.com. Yes, we yes, do. Yes, we do. Our website is up and is ready to go. So if you get on there, click the link, you'll find a whole bunch of stuff to our library full of fun, excitement, adventure. Yes. All righty. There's but there also... Is a, but there is another thing. There is another thing, Holly. You thought I forgot? Yes, I did. Well, guess what? I didn't. There's one other thing, Holly. Take it away. Yes, you get your smartphone and you get the voice memo out and you can record a message to us and send it off to Colts Coffee Convo at gmail.com. All righty. So we were going to start out with a new group. But before we get into that, we must discuss on what we are drinking today. Holly, what are you tantalizing your taste buds with? A hot caramel macchiato upside down. Sounds delicious. I'm going with the cappuccino. Shout out, Stan Heather. Yes. Okay. And for all you new listeners out there, that's the very first cup of coffee I ever tried. It was with that enter in San Francisco. Yes, it was wonderful. All right, are we ready to get into our, well, before that, we hope you do enjoy our Holy City, last uh, podcast of Holy City. Strange group of people. It was fun. It was fun. Now we're getting into... A guilty pleasure. I think this is an interesting group that we're going to be covering today. Definitely related to group that we've done previous. So this is so this is and it's all very modern actually. Yes, actually, it's the continuation. Ah, that's right, the continuation. Holly, would you like to share on who we are covering? We are covering the Sanctuary Church, World Peace and Unification Sanctuary Church. Okay, and that is the continuation of the Unification Church. That is correct. Also and known as Reverend Sun Yun Moon and the Moonies. The Moonies, that's right. So take a look in that library that you can look up at ColtsCoffeeAndConversation.com. All righty, here we go. Now, Reverend Moon returned to the United States in 1971 and two years later brought over the keys to humanity's salvation, his rapidly growing family. Now, by now, he and Hak Jahan had seven children, including 11-year-old Steve, 8-year-old In Jin, 4-year-old Preston, 3-year-old Justin. And by the way, all the kids were given both Korean and American names. Sounds like fun. Moon settled the family in a wooded 18-acre estate in the Hudson River Valley, which he christened East Garden. Now, Moon expected his followers to sacrifice everything but, of course, it wasn't true for his own family. That's a common theme that we have here on Colts Coffee and Conversation. He and his wife and children, who by 1978 now numbered 13 kids, uh, had the run of the East Garden and its lavish manners, contained a bowling alley, six piece ovens, and a waterfall in the dining room. Mm. Still would like to see that. Moon raised his kids like the royal children he believed them to be. Now, they attended private schools, of course, and tutored imported from Japan. Very nice. Of course, fast cars and uh, purebred horses, even hunting weapons. Now, Mrs. Moon, who was not deeply involved in their upbringing, I wonder why. Oh, because somebody else raised her kids, according to a former church member. She spent much of her time shopping. Now, the task of caring for the Messiah's children, of course, fell onto the followers who didn't dare discipline them. Now, quote, the moon's kids were like gods, completely and utterly exempt from the rules, end quote. And that's coming from Donna Orman 
Collins, a one-time unification whose father directed the British branch church. Let's talk about educational background of Sean. Sean Moon, who is the main subject of this, was born September 26, 1979 in Terrytown, New York. He's the youngest son of Reverend Sun Yun Moon, the founder of the unification movement, and Hak Ja Han. He attended the Hackley School. It's a private college preparatory school located in Terrytown, New York, until college. He earned Bachelor of of Liberal Arts and Master of Theology degrees from Harvard Extension University. At the Harvard Center for the Study of World Religions, he met the leader of the Jogi Order of Korean Buddhism, Bub Yang, and pursued an interest in Buddhism. He also practiced Tibetan Buddhism and for a time lived in a Roman Catholic monastery. Beautiful. In 2008, Sean Moon expressed support for newly elected President Barack Obama, saying, I am very proud as an American to have a black president. I was born and raised in America. I am part of a minority. To see a minority representative being the president of the United States of America is extremely inspiring. It's just miraculous, unquote. Uh, All righty. Now let's talk about the ministry part of this wonderful church. Now in April 2008, Sun Young Moon, then was 88 years old, appointed Sean to be the international president of the Family Federation of World Peace and Unification. Theme? Too long. Shorten it up, people. So Sean and members of his church believed that a coronation ceremony with his father back in 2009 made him heir and successor. Now, under his leadership, the Family Federation for World Peace was changed to the Unification Church. Beautiful. He also introduced new practices like spiritual energy, hand movements. That's called spirit fingers, people. Spirit fingers. If you don't get it, don't know what to tell you. Most of the changes were dismissed after he was removed in 2015. Now, the Family Federation for World Peace considers Sean Moon's church as a, quote, breakaway organization. Now, in 2011, Sean Moon visited North Korea to express his condolences on the death of King Jong-il. Now, in 2011, in Pyongyang, to mark the 20th anniversary of his father, Reverend Moon visit to North Korea. Now, de jure President Kim Jong-nam hosted Sean Moon, though they were able to visit the actual... He Alice. hosted him in the official residence. In the official residence. Mm-hmm. Sean Moon donated 600 tons of flour to North Korean children north of Pyongyang province. Now, that's the birthplace of his father. Now, also in the 2011 Tokou earthquake and tsunami, he also donated $1.7 million to the Japanese Red Cross. Now, of course, Holly, you mentioned that you kind of have... Uh, a uh, little admiration for this because they put their money where their mouth is. That's true. They do. So far, so good. All righty. So let's talk about the let's talk about the separation of the original church. Okay. So after Sun Myung Moon died in 2012, Sean Moon and his mother began expressing open differences. He was removed by his mother from various positions from 2013 and eventually taken down as the international president of the Family Federation for World Peace and replaced by Sung Jin Moon, Moon's son with first wife. Mm. Sean Moon was named by his father, Reverend Sun Young Moon, as sole successor to his ministry in 2009. Sean Moon has publicly criticized his mother, <laughs> Hak Jahan, for changing the theological foundations of his father's teaching and elevating her own status. Mm. This led him and his wife to separate from the movement to establish a local offshoot sect named the World Peace and Unification Sanctuary Church in spring 2013, which became officially in January 2015. Now, and also in 2015, Moon began... To renounce his mother, oh, this is glorious here. When we say he criticizes his mom, if you have sensitive ears, you probably want to grow some thick skin because this is good stuff. This is gold. Okay, He considers his mom the whore of Babylon. 
beautiful and refers both to the symbolic female figure and place of evil that's mentioned in the book of Revelation in the Bible. Now saying that she is no longer a true mother. Not, ha- a, not a true mother, but true mother. But true mother, that's right, just true mother. Now, Hak Jahan had a uh, ceremony in which she was uh, in a robe with a crown and a scepter, which Sean Moon says described in Re- Revelation 17 as what the Whore of Babylon wore. Now, that's nice rhyming. Now, to back his claims in Revelation 17.4, and it says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, she replaced the writings of Reverend Moon with her own writings. The scepter represented her departure from Reverend Moon and her own power. She divorced Reverend Moon and felt she achieved her own deserved power unquestioned by anyone. Now, she replaced the original tongle or, quote, logo of the Unification Church, which now has seven heads and ten horns. Now, that's his interpretation of well, the logo. Well, let's go through this. So, yes. what we're looking at is there's two logos. Yes, there is two logos. This is the seven heads and ten horns as written in Revelation seventeen seven, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, of the beast ca- that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. On the one, which is the the original. Yeah, the original logo is uh, red in color. Um, and now in the center, it's actually, there is a circle, but it also shows like sun. So if you're kind of picturing as the old kamikaze flag, but it's kind of centered and shaped like a square. And then, of course, it has, looks like if you're known with a, a Gaelic mythology, it looks like a Celtic cross with the circle and the, the perfectly plus sign in the center, but it's actually at its side, so, so it looks like an X. Like an X. Uh-huh. And then you have the circle as far as the unification part. Now, you take a look at the new one when he's talking about the seven heads and the ten horns. It is, of course, a different color altogether. Okay, And then, of course, when you take a look at it, it looks like four children and two people, but kind of like... Like a family. Yeah, like a family. But, you know, the parents have their hands down in a lower seat, uh, lower... How would you put this? Like a thumbnail, kind of like a thumbnail, okay. and then you have the four children with the thumbnail, but it looks like looks horns. Like, looks well, like horns well, from a bull. Well, actually, they're looking like their hands their are hands lifted are up. Their hands are up, and the the parents' hands are lifted down. But there's a heart in the middle. There's a heart in the middle, and then and there's the a sun. sun in between the two parents' heads, and then of course you have it's in a circular, in a, it's in a cylinder, a circular shape, similar to what the original one looks like. But but if you take a look at it, you have the four heads of the kids. Then you have the two heads of the um, parents, the parents, and then of course they say the son is the other head. But also, if you kind of take a gander at it a little further back, if you take a gaze back, it actually looks like two eyes and another face. Looks yeah, like a so face. there's seven heads. There's seven heads, and then the arms are pointed. Yeah, it looks like horns. It looks like horns. So of course you have how many? Two, four, six, eight, and then of course now when you see the two parents, they're kind of joint as one shaping the heart as one as in another, the center. Yeah. But then you have the two hands outside that makes the 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 ten. Yeah, the ten horns. The ten horns. So kind of spot on on that observation, if you don't say myself. Holly, take it away. We got some more here. Sean and his brother spoke with their mother before the ceremony to ask her not to divide the church because it would be forever divided. It will come with repercussions. There is a record of Reverend Moon giving his announcement that Sean Moon would be his representative after his death and that anyone who said they were the successor would be a heretic and a destroyer. That's quote, a heretic and a destroyer. Not one of the sons thought their mother would be in that category. The sons knew their mother had hurt and resentment for 50 years against her husband and their father. They didn't know... She would take her revenge in this way. He said his mother opened the gate of the gods and the mystery of Babylon when she took power over the unification church. Gate to idolatry, self-worship, narcissism, illicit relationships, the gate to hell. Ah, yes. Now, this is all in a speech 
or a sermon or however you want to say it, that I will put a uh, in the show notes to Sean explaining. It's a pretty long explanation, about 45 minutes, if anyone's interested in in his view of how this all went down with his mother. Right. Okay, beautiful. Now, in Hawk John Hahn's new teachings, she has the female as the primary in all of the illustrations, even Adam, mother, father. The key structure of a kingdom of God has been reversed. She sees it as being more in tune with today's society, relativism. Now, Sean Moon sees it as prostituting the church, family structure, Basically, father equals love of the wife, mother equals respect of the husband. Uh, she has changed the original teachings of Reverend Moon. She claims that she was born sinless because of her Han family background as a third generation Christian. Now, okay, so yeah. now, with that thought, she is basically taking on that she was born without s- original sin. Right, right. So she's all perfect. Yep. Now, in the theology of the sanctuary church, this cannot be true since Reverend Moon, the Messiah, married Hawk John Han from Satan's bloodline, purified her, purged her, and brought her to her natural surrender and brought her up to perfection, up to the lip of perfection. The next thing she had to do after Reverend Moon's death is to throw away her bloodline, quote, Satan's, and say the bloodline of the Messiah, Reverend Moon's, is the true gift from God. Hawk John Han was supposed to put the crown on Sean and his brother Justin so the world would have blessing, not judgment, freedom, not slavery. Now, he also began teaching that Hyun Shil Kang, one of Sung Young Moon's first disciples, was now true mother instead as his spirit had married her. Now, Sean and his wife, John Audley, uh, also began assuming the titles of second king and second queen, respectively. Now, initially, worship services were held in his home, but by May of 2014, the congregation grew to the point where a dedicated building was necessary, and the ministry moved to a 13,600-square-foot former theater and Catholic Church in Newfoundland, Pennsylvania. Now, Sean is backed by his elder brother, Justin Moon, who effectively serves as assistant pastor of the church and owns small arms manufacturer, Car Arms. Now, let's talk about his ministry, Holly. Newfoundland is known for God and guns, and the practice of both of those freedoms fall under one roof at the Rod of Iron Ministries. The World Peace and Unification Sanctuary, also known as the Rod of Iron, is led by Pastor Sean Moon. Quote, We started the church here in Pennsylvania in my brother's basement after my father had passed, Sean said. Sean's brother Justin is at his side and is the owner of Car Arms near Newfoundland. Quote, While I think the right to bear arms is important for most people who come from countries with oppressive governments, Justin said. Quote, my father was in a concentration camp for three years, Justin said. This was in war-torn Korea, Sean said. For us, it's very reminiscing of what our family had to deal with in North Korea. But at the time, my father led international anti-communist movements in Japan and Korea, and also the former Soviet Union as well, unquote. His religion has the same philosophies as his father's but with a significant tool representing freedom. Mm. Quote, in Luke 22, Jesus says, sell your cloak and buy a sword, Sean said. He tells his disciples to arm themselves. It's the right of self-defense. At this time, we have the apex technology, and it's symbolized by the AR-15 in the hands of people. Is a tremendous force of peace to stop tyranny, unquote. Those who follow this religion express it by being armed, with handguns, rifles, and many other weapons. Sean's church came into the spotlight when images from its inaugural marriage blessing ceremony showed hundreds of couples wearing bullet crowns and holding AR-15s. Mmm, that was a sight to see. Quote, We are used to being called a cult, Sean said. Historically, slaves could not own property, did not have rights, and could not own tools for self-defense. 
We believe God calls us to be kings and priests. That's why we had crowns and the coat of arms. We were celebrating the marriage and blessing of freedom, unquote. On a Sunday, Sean holds a two-hour church service, followed by several hours of training at his brother's shooting range. The fabric of Sean's religion is the weaving together of the First and Second Amendment because for him, the gun or rod of iron is what makes people free. When the government fears the people, there is freedom, Sean said. When the people fear the government, then there is tyranny. There are people that mock us, hate us, call us a cult all day long. But we pray for them. We aren't trying to take away their rights. We're not trying to censor them, unquote. Pastor Sean hosts the King's Report, a three-hour YouTube broadcast Monday through Saturday that includes the spiritual guidance and political and social commentary from the biblical viewpoint. Now, I looked for that. It appears that it's not always up there anymore. Right. Not sure why. Mm. Maybe it's just to his own uh, congregants. I'm not sure now. Mm. He has been a practitioner of martial arts from the early age and currently holds a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Since 2015, as a leader of the Sanctuary Church in Newfoundland, Pennsylvania, Pastor Moon has published the Constitution of the United States of Chil Olguk, which lays out the political framework for the future kingdom of God on earth, which when you read it, it's I'll put that up on the show notes where you could find that. It basically reads just exactly as our own United States Constitution, Bill of Rights and all that stuff, except for a little bit of, you uh, know, kingdom a message. A little and twist to it, yeah. yeah. A little dazzle, razzle-dazzle. Mm-hmm. All righty, so let's talk about the Rod of Iron Ministries now. We're going to do our best to explain the new logo, which I have to agree is pretty impressive. Uh, much uh, more aggressive. Uh, much m- uh, I like it. It's kind of cool, actually. So, of course, you have the, the we have the original, original logo of the Unification Church, yes. his father's ministry. Now, that's actually on a shield. Yep, okay. in the middle, right? And then they right smack dab in the center. Now, uh, what's going through the center of the shield is a sword. Now, on top of that sword handle is, of course, a crown. Now, it's got two sections of crossings. Now, you have crisscross, AR-15, both the butts and the tips of the of the rifles. Mm-hmm. Then you have, looks like, two spears or javelins in between the, the two crossings of the AR-15s. And then, of course, you have additional two crowns and, of course, you have a cylinder circling the entire thing. So it's now, yeah, it seems to me that the big crown on the top would represent uh, the Reverend Moon. Right. And there's two s- uh, smaller crowns in the middle. Yeah, on or the one on the left sh- and on the right. Yeah. Of the shield. Of the shield, with, yeah. That would be uh, Second King and, and Second, Second Queen, Queen which mm-hmm. is Sean and yes. then his wife. Mm-hmm. The sword in the middle, I would believe, is Word, Word of, of God. God. The sword of the Lord. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It says, love God, love your neighbor, in in part of the circle. Um, And then in the bottom, it says, Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. And then, of course, it has thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Uh, as it is in heaven, Matthew six ten. Now let's talk about their mission statement or their mission. Now their mission says the uh, experience the freedom that comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, uh, as co heirs with Christ. Romans eight seventeen. We are to love God and love our neighbor through protecting God's kingdom with the rod of iron. Now here's the core values. Personal accountability to God, mind, body, unity through self-defense training, the peace, police, peace, militia, which we will get into that, building Christ-centered families, uh, living for the sake of others, and finally defending our family, neighbor, and God's kingdom through the biblical word of God and self-defense culture using Revelation 19.15 as reference. Now, now, did you want to talk yes, about... Yes, yes, I have a, a lot of questions here. Okay, since you did a lot more digging than I did on this, I have a, a few questions here. Me being a person who probably doesn't, you know, gets confused here with, okay, you talk about Reverend Moon, so if you haven't listened to the Unification Church podcast at ColtsCoffeeAndConversation.com uh, and also at Stitcher Podcast, wherever you can 
download your podcast. Yeah, there's also. Yeah, we're all there. We're yeah. on iHeartRadio. We're on everything that you can get a podcast. All right. Apple so, Podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. yes. That's right. The pink uh, little icon on your phone. Use it. Like it. Love it. Cheap plug. All right. Okay. I have a few questions here because I'm confused. Okay. And I'm talking about, let's let's pretend that that I didn't do the Unification Church podcast many moons ago. Ha ha, pun intended. <laughs> okay. You know, because some things don't make sense because when you talk about the background and of all this kind of stuff, where it says right here in the mission statement where it says experience the freedom that comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ, but they, he's like, they don't. He's not their he's Messiah? He's not the Messiah. Yeah, it's dad's the Messiah, but Jesus Christ is like an afterthought, but yet it's all Bible, 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 but you kind of just, man, Jesus Christ is just, meh, there. In their beliefs, they believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Right. But not God. Okay, so okay. They, they just give him the dap as he's the son. Well, he came down, well, they believe he came down right. to start a family, get uh, married, start a family, and gotcha. have a true family. Ah. He didn't do that, and so he failed, according to them, he his failed mission. That mission. Okay. Okay. They still believe in his words and right. all the sermons and right. the word of God. But now his father, uh, Sean's father, Sun Yun Moon, was the second Messiah. And so he came down <laughs> to complete the mission, mission. Oh, which gosh. is to be married and right, start and a true a family. True family. Okay. So he started the true family with his second wife. Hak Jahan, right? Okay, which had all those children, right? So they were true mother or true father, right. And true mother, right? Okay, I have other questions, but I'll be jumping ahead. Oh, okay. To, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, kind of get into this here, because guess what? In all cults, you always have to find out, and you always have to follow what the money. Gotta follow the money. So let's go ahead and talk about the money. Yes, the money. The money. Follow Reverend the Moon money. was in his late 80s and contemplating his legacy. Mm. Despite his promises that mm. Mrs. Moon would inherit everything, he'd begun divvying up his global empire among his sons, including Preston, Steve, Justin, and Sean. But once again, tragedy struck the family. In 2008, Steve died of a heart attack at 45. This left an opening for Injun, who was a daughter, who maneuvered her way to the helm of the Manhattan Center, the only one of Moon's daughters to assume leadership role. She immediately gave her lover, Alistair Ferrant, a top position and fired half the staff, mm. many of them long-standing church members. She also began courting new talent, including a 30-something rock musician named Ben Lawrenson. That summer, Reverend and Mrs. Moon were injured when a helicopter they were traveling on crashed into a South Korean mountainside. While they recovered, their children began squabbling over the only major piece of Moon's empire that remained up for grabs, the Unification Church of America, which oversees the movement's U.S. congregations, along with hundreds of millions of dollars in assets. Preston saw himself as the natural heir, but Injun also spotted an opportunity. When Justin approached her about staging a takeover, she agreed. While Preston was out of the country, Sean, who headed the International Church, issued a memo saying that Injun was to be the chairperson of the unification movement in America. The American Church then convened a board meeting led by Injun. Most of the existing board members were pressured to resign and were replaced with Injun's allies, after which Injun was formally elected chair. A bitter family feud ensued. Preston later staged his own boardroom coup at the Unification Church International, Smooth. the holding company for the Moon's family U.S. business, giving him the unfettered control over billions, billions. of dollars in assets. He used the proceeds to fund an offshoot movement that drew on his father's teachings without deifying the Moon clan. Billions. Meanwhile... The family feud erupted into open view as the siblings sparred over billions of dollars in assets in court. And one of Injun's deputies traveled the country delivering a PowerPoint presentation that cast Preston as a fallen Adam who was being controlled by Satan. This was the state of play in the early 2012 when Injun disappeared. Now, the disappearance of her is covered in our other 
podcast. That's right, which you can find at ColtsCoffeeAndConversation dot com. Yeah, or anywhere you You're get, get your, your podcast. Podcasts. Yes, the blue icon on your iPhone or. The blue icon? Is it's it purple. It's purple on both right. of them? <laughs> anyway. Anyway, yeah, that's fine. doesn't matter. <laughs> cheap plug, cheap plug. Okay, go ahead. Next, Mrs. Moon moved to, the, to claim the inheritance her husband had promised. She wrested control of the International Church from Sean and issued a memo saying everything that is carried out in Korea from this day onward will be centered on true mother. She later ousted Justin, who controlled most of Moon's Korean enterprises. After five decades spent in Moon's shadow, the kingdom was in her hands. Dun, 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 dun. So basically, from my viewpoint, I don't know, it appears that Sean Moon got nothing. Sean got nothing. Preston got all the American money. And yep. Mom got all the Korean money. Yes. And if you want to know what happens to the Korean stuff, you need to, once again, listen to the other one. But yes, uh, yeah, looks like Sean got absolutely nothing. But... Well, he could have, like you said, he could have, like I, like we talked in pre in our pre sh- pre show preparation. He probably saved some money. He's not a moron. No, he's, he's not. not an idiot, and I'm pretty sure he wasn't getting and paid also, ten dollars an hour. Right, and also <laughs> his brother, who's his uh, his assistant. Well, his assistant pastor. He yeah. owns that thing, so the, there's the financial backing there. Yeah, there's some there's some money to at least. He's start not. Up. I don't think he's missing any meals. Let's just put it that way. No. No. Now, also, before we go on to the next yes. thing, mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about the peace police and peace militia. Okay. Well, all right. Okay, it's fine. The thing with that is they have other videos up there on their website of the Rod of Iron. Mm-hmm. And they do a lot of martial arts. Right. And a lot of gun training and self-defense. Right. I guess it's for defense. It's not for offense. It's offense is for defense. Yes. Yes, defending yourself versus being aggressive towards others. Exactly. And in this way, they believe they love God, they love their neighbors, they, they're they protecting families. Right. Let's go into the Rod of Iron Motorcycle Ministry. Okay, now there's not much information on this because it's a fairly new ministry, but uh, this ministry outreaches to motorcycle clubs and motorcycles at large. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming you're going to have this video up as well on the Yeah, the there's notes. A, a link yeah, to there's the a video. Yeah, there's a link to it where he's... <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> There's this picture of him, of course. Of course, uh, if you're not familiar with the motorcycle, let's let's not lie. A lot of people watch Sons of Anarchy. So if you didn't watch it, well, I don't know what to tell you because millions of Americans watch Sons of Anarchy. Then there's also another one, too, called The Mayan. So let's not pretend that we don't know. But just in case for the people who do not know, when you're in a motorcycle club slash motorcycle ministry, you have cuts. Now, cuts are the vests that they wear with their patches on it. So since there is now the Rod of Iron Motorcycle Ministry, there is a picture shown of good old Sean Moon here. And, of course, he has the uh, a wooden carving of the, the logo of the ministry behind him. And, of course, there is his uh, crown of bullets. Very nice. Of course, he has his cut on. It looks like he's uh, looks like a picture of him doing a podcast with, those su- with that sweet mic there. And then, of course— Let's see. Wh- what's on that cut? Okay, well, on the cut itself, you have uh, the uh, uh, looks like the uh, position that where he says Second King yes. uh, on there, and, and beneath he's, a founding, he's a founding pastor of it. And then, of course, it has the uh, was that that black? Uh, it's a black robed regiment, which was from 1776 in the uh, Revolutionary War. Yeah, and he's got the uh, black and uh, I think it's black and green or black and white military flag patch above it. Um, now, on that one patch. Right above Second King, it says, love God, love your neighbor. Right. Yes, it does. It's got the crown on it as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, to his right of this photo, it looks like a drinking container of some sort or possibly just a massively big paperweight. It's shaped as a bullet. Very cool. And then, of course, the ultimate prize in this entire photo is a gold-plated AR-15, very, very gangster, may I add. Fully fully tactical, very nice, very nice. You forgot about the globe? Oh, yes, the globe to the left. And then, of course, on the right, it looks like he's got some sort of, it looks like a, uh, a mount of some sort with him on top of it or a figurine it on top of it. It could be, maybe, s- yeah, it does look like something like a champion. Like a rock, rocky-looking thing with mm-hmm. his arms up above the, above and then 
some other stuff. But yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty impressive, uh, pretty impressive uh, photo of him. Now Very I nice. wanted to give a shout out to this uh, pod. Well, it's a podcast, but it's a YouTube. Yes, a video go ahead. Play. Yes, it, there's a an extensive interview with Sean Moon. It was done in this year in January, and it's from Demons Row. Okay, it's a uh, motorcycle club uh, man who talks about uh, motorcycle clubs and what to do and what not to do. And it kind of like a, a for for dummies, right? Right. But they interview Sean, and it's it's I, I really liked it, and you can kind of get the feel for Sean in that and being more on the outside of his churchy pastoral yes. type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then they also have the thing called the F- uh, Freedom Festival. Now, these are uh, two days with seminars discussing Second Amendment, communism, socialism, uh, and the loss of American freedom. And then, of course, we did discuss uh, the peace police slash peace militia. Yeah, now let me go go on to what he says about that. Yeah, but go ahead. Quote, this is uh, Sean, about this peace police, peace militia. Hmm. The PPPM. Quote, the highest power of protection is firepower. The rod of iron and the Holy Ghost and fire. That's real power. Old people, young people, doesn't matter age or size because everybody becomes more dangerous. Because we don't want to see our kids die. We don't want to see predators rule the day and mafias running over us and raping our children. Does that make sense? That's why we have the peace police, peace militia. We have the rod of iron. The gun community is not about being badass or tough. It's... Not about that. Practicing to be deadly because you love people. You fear if the tyrants take over, if the wicked take over, you know, what would they do? The right to self-defense and the right to self-preservation of your neighbor is not an American right. It is a human right. Mm. The actual commandment is love God, love your neighbor. We are practicing to become stronger so we can be better protectors of people. Mm. We don't get pissed off easily. (laughs) We're slow to anger. If someone is cursing at me, it's... It's okay. It's not worth shooting them. (laughs) Uh, It's about making peace through strength. Learning these things where you learn discipline of your mind, you learn power, you learn the basic ethic of love, which is absolutely essential in a Christian culture that then has the rod of iron, unquote. They do show them having these AR-15s in church. Right. The big thing came with that A&E special. Yeah, it was uh, cults uh, and extreme beliefs. It all came to to a national level. Now, when they go into before they go into the sanctuary of the right. church, yeah. they have people set up to look at your gun, inspect it, make sure there's no bullets. I mean, there, it's just an empty gun. There's nothing in it. Yeah, okay? but they're double checking it for safety purposes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, this peace police, peace militia, they do all kinds of different training for safety, how to operate things, you know, what's ethical, all that stuff. Right. So it's not like a bunch of crazy people, you know, and I know that they would like to be, oh, you know, they're just like the Branch Davidians right. and all that. Well, right. that's not exactly true at all because the Branch Davidians, which we did already. Which you can easily access at Colts Coffee and Conversation dot com. Or anywhere you can get your podcast. You know it. They had a different thing that they were doing with right. the guns, okay? It's different, even right. though from a person that is anti-gun, right. it looks the same. Right. But these people are probably a lot more safe right. because they are taught um, responsibility, ethics, safety, you know, right. the whole thing. Right. Well, do you want to talk about uh, the other couple of things, too, that uh, we were discussing? Yes. We have the divine principle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the divine principle is basically the tenet of what Reverend Sun Yun Moon believed. Right. And so Sean Moon is just continuing Yeah, the it's same. a continuation, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I will put a link in the show notes to where you can find all that. That's a, it's a long deal. Right, it's a long what, diatribe. Yeah, right. what they believe. Their beliefs, yeah. Uh, very conservative Extremely people. conservative, yeah. What are the marriage blessings, right? Oh gosh. So that's what it Yeah. So that's what was on the A and they yes. they really mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like well, th- it was a marriage blessing we we it, they the show portrayed it as they're basically blessing a gun. But they weren't. No, they <laughs> It was a trip. No, it was a trip. But go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So Reverend Moon originally had these marriage big a uh, mass 
marriage. Yeah, they had the Yankee Stadium one. They had the big old huge uh, with the 50,000 one in like this basketball arena. Yeah. Yeah, in Korea and all that kind they of stuff. They have all yeah, that yeah. stuff. They all have the same dress on. Yeah, and, 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 and real quick, guys, once again, you need to go back and, and kind of review some of this stuff because it is online. You Small little little teaser. Well, not a teaser, kind of a giveaway on one of our, our previous cost, previous podcast about the Unification Church. These couples that were getting married, they never met each other until that day. So that's how crazy this kind of stuff gets. And there's video footage of it. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. So that was the original Unification Church. Uh, that that Church. was the idea behind it, yes. Mm-hmm. What Sean is doing is... I think there is discussions like here's parents, different parents within the church. Right. They come together. Who's eligible to be married? Right. They make suggestions. I don't know how match strict maker, that is. Yeah. Make me a match. Yes. It's not as where I've you know heard other podcasts talking about real life experiences of people who were in these matchmaking right. things where Reverend Moon was in with all these eligible men over here, women over there, and he'd just walk up and down the main uh, aisle and he would pick you and you and then they'd go off and they would talk and they would have certain things that they would do and if they agreed to get married, they'd sign papers, okay? And then they would have 40 days apart right? and then they would come together and they marry and then they have a three-day ritual Mm, that we won't go into. Yeah. But so, but this, I don't know how much this is the same. It could be. I don't know. We don't know for sure. Yeah. But, but I it, don't think it's a, as. It looks um, like it was a renewing of vows, possibly. It could be. These are married couples. Yeah. These are married couples. And yeah. And they're also doing their, it's kind of like in the Mormon church, they do, uh, they seal. Yeah. They seal the marriage. In yeah. the temple. Right. This is kind of a thing like it's that. Similar a to spiritual that. Spiritual yeah. type of thing. I don't know. I don't really know if it's a brainwashing. I don't really feel like right, it is. Right. Yeah. The question is, what is the question that we always ask? The at question, the end? especially at this one, is it a cult? Holly, is this a cult? Yes. Yes, it is. But it's not the same type of a cult like well, we would have mm, as. This, a, like, this is not a. Uh, would you call this more of a. Well, it's a combination of a whole bunch of other cults mashed into one. This is pretty much in a kind of a honeypot one because part of it's political, does have guns involved. Definitely has a charismatic leader because when you hear him talk, oh yeah, oh, Sean's, Sean's on fire. Yeah, he's pretty. No, good. he he <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good. Um, you know, it does have the the mystery of it all, but mm-hmm. there's the one thing that this this group has that the rest of them don't. Everything's that blatantly out in the open. Yeah, they hide nothing. Well, well, that we that will be. appears that they hide nothing. Um, he's very. Very open about their belief system. Very open about what they do. They're very open about what you know where their stance is. They're very open. About, I mean, he's just flat out open about everything. So, within everything, I'm probably sure there's a skeleton or two in the closet. But with this group specific, they're not. I don't see. Well, you don't see either a sense of abuse. Well, now. Uh, we did talk about it's officially it was it 2013 then it became 2015 the official uh, right so there's still it's still a new it's pretty it's newish new. yeah it's only what, as far seven as, years yeah yeah as far as when Sean took it we don't know but the, the I think safe to be safe it's still un- to be determined but as of right now well no it's a cult in the fact that the belief so there's two types of cults in the way where it could just be the abusive cult the one that. Um, like Synanon. Yeah, these yeah. kind of things. Right. But the cult in this respect would be more of a cult of belief that's different from Orthodox Christianity. Right. It's it's not Orthodox Christianity at all. It's kind of Christian-based, but it's like Orthodox Christianity, Catholic Church, Protestant Church, uh, Evangelical churches will say, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses is a cult. Right. Okay. Right. Even though they're sort of like an outsider that didn't know much about Christianity would think they were Christians. Right. Similar. I'm not saying they're Jehovah's Witnesses. No, but, no, no. But, but it's I mean, a it's, similar it's the, uh, the beliefs point, point are, of view, yeah. are not are off of the main Orthodox exactly. Christianity. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know if it's dangerous per se. Right. It appears that everyone in it, they're not out recruiting. No, they're not actually. Their only way that they show that they're recruiting is, well, they have like their Second Amendment right. 
festivals that come, other people that have nothing to do with, with, you with religion. They're not, they're not really recruiting. No. Nope. They're just forming. Yeah, they're kind of networking. Right. But with people that are not Christians or not any, I Is mean, they're like separate people, and, th- and they've had interviews with people like that, you know, oh, I'm a guy who's Second Amendment. Amendment guy, yeah. yeah. And or they gal. talk. yeah. Or now they're going into the motorcycle ministries, yeah. you know, and all that kind of culture. Right. So they're kind of trying to touch base with people of like mind in these certain areas. Right. You know, and maybe that's how they feel. Maybe they'll bring That's how something. they can reach some people or something maybe like or, that. Or maybe not. Maybe not, yeah. Yeah, cause, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and I agree with you on this. It's kind of like a, a splash of this, a dash of that, like a little bit of the Rajneeshis when it comes to the guns and the, you know, the 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 training and stuff because that's what they did on the farm or on the big chunk of land in Oregon and then of course you have the you know the the stigma of the uh, Branch Davidians kind of correlation with obviously the Moonies as well so it's kind of like a little bit of this a little bit of that a pot a spoon (laughs) a chair you know a hat a hat (laughs) yeah exactly so I mean, but yeah, I mean, this is this is a cult, but I mean, it's just is this one here has just a different feel to it, where it's kind of a guilty pleasureish kind of thing, to where it's like, ooh, this would be kind of cool to maybe hang out once, and then that's it, you know, kind of thing. Right. Uh, also, whereas everything is just you still like, okay, this is weird, this is weird, yeah, it's kind of odd, but you don't feel threatened. I don't think well, so. Now, or there's some that, people well, maybe would, I don't know. Well, I mean, people I'm trying to try to remember the words to describe it. Go ahead. Some people might feel that they're threatened uh, right. because of their political beliefs. So, well, oh yeah, it's it's offensive politically, not yes. religiously. Correct. Ah, so okay, there you go. Because that's, that's they what. do support, they supported Donald Trump. They don't think that he is the end all be all. Right. Okay. Because they even called him out on you A know lot of some stuff, stuff that right. they didn't agree to. Of course. But. I don't think we would feel weird about it, but maybe some other people from other political views would not like being around them. Right. No, I get it. I get it. I yeah. get it. Well, there it is, folks. There is Sean Moon, the second king, or the second king, right? Yes, he's the second, second king. king. Second king. Very interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, feel free to listen to all of our other things in our library, but you can find it. ColtsCoffeeAndConversation.com. Please reach out to us on Facebook at, and also on Twitter and also on any other platform. Please feel free to listen to us on all the platforms. We are on everything wherever you get your podcast. Yes, we've repeated it because guess what? We've repeated it. Alrighty, guys, on that note, good night, Holly. Good night, Carl.